Hello everybody and welcome to the third Python and Pandas Basics tutorial video in our video series. In this video we're going to be actually coding finally. Sorry for anybody who was getting impatient. And what we're going to do in this video is talk about how to write to a CSV file and how to pull from a CSV file. Now to do this we're actually going to, we don't have a data set, so we're going to have to conjure up a data set. So we're going to use Yahoo Finance to pull some finance data. Um, so we can create a CSV file with some data that everybody can access and then also pull from that CSV. So probably one of the most common operations and one of my most popular videos is saving data to a CSV and reading from a CSV and then later on graphing that data and stuff like that. And you can do this in pure Python uh, but it's very simple in pandas and so it's good to know um, how to do it in pandas. I'm still a pretty big advocate um, for knowing how to code everything yourself, um, but once you understand how to do some of these things yourself, um, it's good to use something like Pandas because Pandas is going to speed it up for you, and Pandas is going to do it in a much more efficient manner than you, but as time goes on, you're going to find yourself um, having some problems with Pandas, or maybe there's something in Pandas that you don't know how to do, or because of the structure of Pandas, it's literally impossible to do with Pandas, it's good to know um, how to do things yourself as well. But anyway, enough on that, let's get started. So the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is we need two imports uh, that we're gonna be needing with pandas. So to read, or to save to a CSV and read from a CSV, you're gonna need a couple of things. One, you're gonna wanna import uh, pandas as PD. That's just the way people import pandas. Often it's just PD, just like NumPy as NP. Um, so import pandas as PD, so we can use pandas. And then another thing that we're gonna want is from uh, pandas import data frame and the data set that we're going to get is going to be a two-dimensional um, array and it's going to be much like a numpy array like I said but then we can also treat it like a dictionary um, just so everyone's uh, comfy with what we're doing uh, so so we have those two things so to write to a CSV and read from a CSV that's literally all you need but uh, we also want to communicate with Yahoo Finance so we're gonna need a couple of things for that. So first we're gonna import uh, date time. Um, and this is so we can specify a slice of data that we want from Yahoo Finance, because Yahoo Finance has a very specific uh, date stamp. Now just, just to clarify, uh, when, we, if, when we later go to graph data like this, we actually don't need date time. So if you were gonna do it by hand yourself, you would need date time to convert to the timestamp, but actually you won't need date time um, like daytime is actually, I think pandas uses daytime, but you won't need to touch daytime at all. Anyway, moving on. Uh, also, we're going to import pandas.io.data. And this is, again, this is just so we can uh, import data from Yahoo Finance. I just want to stress what's required for reading and writing the CSVs and what's not. So now we can say sp500 equals. Um, pd.io.data.get underscore data underscore yahoo data. What data do we want to get? We'll just grab SP 500 data. So that's 5EGSPC is the uh, ticker name for it. Uh, comma, enter. Now we can say start equals date time dot date time. And this is really the only reason why we needed um, it's the only reason why we needed date time is just so we can feed a date time object through for Yahoo Finance so it knows what we're looking for anyway 2010 and 1 so that'll start um, October 1st 2000 and then outside of this we're gonna say end equals date time dot date time and then here we'll say 2014. Today is 6 um, 11, so we'll do that. And that's it. So that is going to read the data in SP 500. So what we could do is first, let's go ahead and print SP 500 just so we can see what we're working with. So uh, we'll run this. And here is the output from the SP 500 infor information. So you have date, open, high, low, close, volume, and adjusted close. And you can see that date is kind of like down a little bit here. And um, 
that's because date is the index. And these are not indexes, but they are like titles, labels rather, not titles. Anyway, scrolling down to the bottom here, uh, because it acts like a NumPy array, it does what we expect a NumPy array to do and kind of, um, it's not gonna print out the entire thing. If we come down here, we can see that we have 3,442 rows times six columns worth of data. So we have this data set. Now we wanna save it to a CSV. So uh, if we just naturally saved this to a CSV, it wouldn't be separated, it wouldn't be delimited for us. But what we can do instead is we can close out of this and we can stop printing it. Oh, uh, one quick thing. We can print S&P 500 like we just did, but that printed a lot of data, right? More than we would need and more than we can use, right? So when you print out S&P 500, it prints out quite a bit of data, but you would never need that much, right? <laughs> if you wanted to see the whole data set, you would you know, maybe save it to a file and look at it or you would specify exactly what you wanted it to print out. But in most cases, you're actually looking for um, just to see like the structure. And so to do that, you can actually use uh, dot head. And this just prints like the first bit of information. So we can save and run that real quick. And now it only gives us just five rows real quick, just so we can see the structure of the data. And we don't have, it's, it's a lot less memory intensive and it, there's no reason to print as many rows as we did before. So just to show you guys real quick that dot head command. Now, uh, to save to CSV, we can do the following. sp500 dot two underscore CSV, and then we specify the CSV name that we want. We'll call this sp500 underscore OHLC dot CSV, done. There's no, you know, write, and then dot write, and then, oh, don't forget to close, none of that. Just save, run it, and it's done. And let's see, I'll pull it up for you guys. Notepad, here it is, done. Very simple, we've got the first you know, label row and then all of the data. So we just pulled all of this data from Yahoo Finance and indeed we have over 3,000 rows, almost 3.5 thousand rows of data pulled. Um, so that was great. So now we can close out of this and so that is two CSV, we've saved two CSV. Now we don't need any of this code anymore so I'm just literally gonna comment all of this out because now we have a CSV file. And now we wanna read from that CSV. Again, super simple to do this. So we're gonna say df for data frame equals pd.read underscore CSV. You could call this a series, but it's not a series, right? Because it's a two dimensional array. So this is going to be a data frame. Pandas is just gonna automatically know and that's how it's gonna save it. But anyway, read CSV. What CSV is that? Well, the same one that we just saved. So I'm just gonna copy and paste it. So read CSV. Um, here, you could just get away with just this. So um, let me show you what happens when we print DF. Uh, let's print DF.head. And so we'll save and run that. And here you have this, okay? And you see how it, it gave us like this, you know, uh, like primary key or whatever worth of data. Um, that's kind of annoying, but we didn't specify any index or anything like that. So what we can do instead is we can pull this over here and when we read from the CSV, uh, let me close out of that. When we read from the CSV, we can say index underscore col col wow, column <laughs> equals, and then specify the date. So capital D-A-T, that was the title of the column. And then also we can just let it know, hey, there are dates here. So parse dates equals true. Now save that, run it, and we'll pull this over. And now we can see indeed date is now our, um, our index here. And then we have open, high, low, close, volume, adjusted close. So now we have all that data. We have it basically the same way that we just read it from, um, Yahoo Finance. Now it just automatically read it into a data frame and just automatically knew that it was a data frame and to give the index value to dates. Um, whereas reading from a CSV is a lot different. You're going to want to specify, hey, this is the index's date. And also, if, if it has dates, you can just notify it, hey, parse the dates. And it is going to intuitively parse the dates. So uh, later on, I can show you guys what we can do with that and why that becomes very useful. Uh, but anyway, 
that's going to conclude this video just how to write to a csv how to read from a csv extremely simple literally just read csv or to csv um, simple as that and uh, very quick very intuitive and also just whenever you're doing this even if the csv file is a massive file it's very good at what it does it's very efficient so um, definitely a good method for reading and writing uh, csvs so anyways uh, that's going to conclude this video. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.